It's done by a researcher who's based in Canada, but with a large team in India, okay. where they wanted to actually document what are the causes of death in India. So they made, uh, chose representative districts, mm -hmm. and they went to the homes and asked people what did what, what deaths occurred, and tried to through what's a technique called verbal autopsy, identify the causes of death. Mm -hmm. Now, what we found in in relation to snake bite, which mm -hmm. was only one of the problems that they studied, that the death rates that they reported far outweigh anything reported in the government system. And there are areas in the country which have a very high death rate. The other interesting thing that came from the study is that 70% of deaths never reach the hospital. And the other major risk factor for cause of death was be li living in a rural area. Now, if you look at the number of uh, trials for heart attacks across the world, it may run into hundreds, okay. even in, they're going on right now. You know, major randomized controlled trials for a condition like myocardial infarction. But now if you ask, is there a single randomized controlled trial occurring for anti-venom anywhere in the world? The answer is probably zero. The other problem which I want to add to what Anand said is that because of the neglect, both in research and even in way making available the vaccines and really studying the problem to say let's you know reduce the morbidity and mortality due to snakes without having to kill all the snakes in the country because biodiversity is another important issue snakes serve a purpose in our society they keep the rodent population down and stuff so there's also been a consequent neglect in medical education you know in my entire mbbs days i never learned anything about snake bites i learned about snakes when we had biology so the doctor who's educated in a tertiary care big hospital, right, has no clue how to deal with snake bite. So now if they post it into PHCs, you give them antivenom. They don't really know all the variations. So, for example, one of the experts who came to our groups was telling us that in parts of the country with the crate bites. Most crates bite at night and they generally bite people who are sleeping on the floor. Okay. And the crate does not leave much of a bite mark. So in the morning when you wake up, he told us a story of how a girl is suddenly found with looking pale, neck is floppy, and they thought this is hysteria. Hmm. Because the next day the girl has an exam. Hmm. This is a typical sign of a crate bite because it affects the nerves okay. and the neck muscles are weaker than others. Hmm. And so maybe these doctors don't know this. It also presents sometimes as abdominal pain. Okay. Right? So when somebody comes with abdominal pain, which MBBS doctor will think of a snake bite? Especially if there's no history of a bite. So this needs to be given more importance in the medical curriculum. And you can actually do it properly only if you have the data from our own country. Uh, to answer your question of why is it not a research priority, the question is who dies? Is it a chief minister? Is it the Prime Minister? Is it the person who's a businessman? The problem does not affect people who make decisions. Okay. So it's a political issue. Isn't it ironic that the government has not yet helped answer the need for lack of vaccines and more specific vaccines by opening up snake farms in different parts of the country and funding people. There are people who will do it, but they need the funding and they need the support, right? Then you get more species of snakes being milked for venom. And then you need to set up more production units. The first is that it is one of the most allergic drugs known to human. In different studies, up to 50% of people who are injected with this antivenom can develop a severe allergic reaction.
can we have at least what they call a bivalent antivenom? One group of antivenom which will take care of this, or the cobra and crate, they have common symptoms, and the other which is of both the vipers. Then you reduce the amount of the protein from the other group in this, and therefore the reactions will come down, and also you can get a more potent uh, and venom for that particular species. The second important problem is that we don't know how much antivenom to give. So what they do is a little bit of overkill, give as much 10 miles, which will neutralize all the venom. Studies which Anand and are in this hospital and elsewhere have shown that even if you give low dose venom, the effects are the same as giving high dose venom. But those are done in different parts of the country and when we did a, a systematic review of all these studies, we realized that everybody has a different definition of what is low dose. Some people will give two ampules and they'll give it over one hour, three hours. So even if you want to do a study right now, what is the logic and the scientific rationale is still not very clear. So this requires a series of studies to establish all these things. And to date, there has been no government-funded initiative in any of our countries which, who are affected by this problem to address this question. And most of this antivenom is produced by the, at least in Tamil Nadu, for example, 80% is produced by the government. But you'll find that even that production is not enough to meet the demands of the snake. So you have to reduce the antivenom and don't waste it. You have to give the optimal dose. So the tragedy is nobody knows what the optimal dose is. The point Anand is making about the studies that have been shown, the manufacturers have calculated that if the entire contents of a cobra is injected into a person, it will come out to this much venom and therefore you need to give that much venom to neutralize it. But that's not the reality when a person, cobra bites a person because cobras may sometimes bite or any snake, can, poisonous snake can bite a person and inject very little venom. It's called a dry bite, nothing. Because snakes were startled, they had no intent to bite. Or it can inject the entire amount. the price of antivenom for a single vial has gone up from 200 rupees to 650 rupees. The, the average, the minimum dose that is recommended by the WHO is 10 vials. So if, you, uh, if the drug cost is 30% or 50% even, the average cost for a patient is 10 to 20,000 rupees. Tamil Nadu is actually providing free anti-venom to all its government pro The production is only enough for government hospitals. There's hardly anything left over for private hospitals. And we are the one, many private hospitals also treat snake pain. The second issue is there are stakes, like for example, we heard in Jharkhand. The government of Jharkhand doesn't provide free anti-venom. The government the, hospitals apparently don't have anti-venom. They don't have anti-venom. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, even nobody is getting any free anti-venom. Okay. So that is another priority. Local governments need to realize that they need to be help to see these are priorities. Now if you take a condition like TB, mm -hmm. the government has what's the national TB program as you're aware, but they do what's called a public-private partnership, mm -hmm. so that you can, a GP, a private practitioner in Velo can give government TB drugs. Sure. Okay, if you take antiretroviral therapy, we have an ART center here for HIV where the government gives the provider of care is a private, but we do what is the government. Since it's an emergency condition and we have to save the lives of snake bite people, it's very important that the government should make available mm -hmm. anti venom to people who are treating snake bites. <coughs> 